Assassin's Creed has been around for quite a long time. It's changed its time settings in nearly every entry, and from Assassin's Creed Origins, it's changed its gameplay from stealth action to in-depth RPG. For the first time since Assassin's Creed Black Flag, which is about an entire console's generation ago, I've been excited for an entry in the series. Assassin's Creed Valhalla is upon us, and just in time for the new console generation to start too. Now before we get into it, I am reviewing this on a Xbox One X, not a Series X. So if you're looking at the graphics and saying it's not that great, I'll provide some footage and come back to Valhalla when my next gen console arrives, probably about a day or two after this video drops. Assassin's Creed Valhalla starts on the right foot, already inside the Animus because anything outside of the game's set time period is boring as fuck. It's boring. You're boring everybody. Quit boring everyone. You'll start as a young Ivor, where you'll move through a linear but heavy character development early pre-prologue area of the game inside a Viking longhouse. During this moment you'll get a pretty great yet rather simple plot premise for Ivor. Both your parents are killed in front of you and you're out for revenge. Basically you're sort of a bit of a Batman. From here you can choose to either play as male or female Ivor, which you can change at any time during your playthrough of Valhalla. Immediately following this you'll be out for revenge trying to track down and kill your parents murderer. You'll learn how to do the series basic actions like hide in tall grass, climb buildings and structures, how to equip weapons and armor and also how combat works. Basically nothing new for an Assassin's Creed game. The first maybe hour or so doesn't give you much new to the series besides the setting and the characters but you need to learn how to use these basic skills before you start to get to the good stuff. You return to the Raven Clan, that's Ivor's tribe's settlement which looks like it's ripped right out of the TV show Vikings. We'll get to more of that a little bit later. When you're at your settlement you'll also be able to upgrade and customize Ivor in a variety of ways but again we'll get to that a little later. Now I want to avoid spoilers as much as possible but the actual prologue of Valhalla will take roughly three hours before you see the game title appear. But the events that take place during the prologue are insane and it sort of feels a little bit like the film Face Off. Now what do I mean by that? Well the great, if you will, 90s action flick starts with the death of a child and a plane chase. Now there are no planes or Nick Cage in Valhalla but there are some great action moments that tease what else comes later on in the game. Now after the prologue when you arrive in England you'll establish your own settlement and you need supplies to build structures, stores and upgrade your tribe. It's a system a little similar to the Assassin's Creed Brotherhood how you could upgrade your city and assassins but rather than just dumping money into the town you'll need resources to upgrade your settlement and to get resources you'll need to do raids. If you've watched Vikings then you know how brutal and rad these can be. You'll traverse Valhalla through your longboat but you can also use a horse I guess and arriving at camps or towns you can elect to raid them. When you're near a settlement, camp or town by pressing the relevant button, Ivor will pull out his horn and signal a raid. You'll ransack churches and cemeteries, free prisoners, set buildings on fire and of course kill everyone and anyone attempting to stop you. When you're looking at it on paper, if you want to upgrade your tribe's settlement, you'll need to do raids, which can seem a bit tedious but holy crap are the raids fun. Now you'll have small sub raids just to loot for resources but there's also large raids where there's a boss waiting for you and in some of these battles you'll take charge of battering rams and lead the charge. Using the resources you've collected from raiding at your settlement you can create shops and upgrade your tribe. The prologue of Valhalla puts Ivor in a pre-established settlement showing what you can and can't do but when you're starting from the ground up you'll need to build these stores again. For instance in the prologue you can go to your tribe's tattoo artist whenever you want, but when you've started a new settlement in England you'll need to build the parlour first before you can customise Ivor again. When you're in your tribe's settlement you can sell trinkets and unwanted goods at the store, upgrade your weapons and armour at the blacksmith, get new mounts and pets and even yes get shit faced playing drinking games. And yes you can pet dogs and cats. Homer are you wearing a tie to impress Laddie? Do you think he noticed? Mm. The combat of Valhalla is, in my personal opinion, way better than Odyssey. For one main key difference, shields are back. For whatever stupid reason in Odyssey you couldn't equip a shield, but here in Valhalla you can dual wield shields, baby. Now just like in Odyssey though, there is a stamina bar which you'll need to keep an eye on in combat. Blocking, dodging and attacking uses stamina, and if you run out of stamina, you'll be vulnerable to attacks for a brief period. 
You've got standard light and heavy attacks and a parry ability that can stun enemies, giving you the opportunity to perform brutal finishes. Speaking of brutal finishes, any time you perform an attack on an enemy that had killed them, Ivor will do some kind of attack that will constantly have you going like this. Gear-wise, you can equip Ivor in a variety of weapons and armors. You'll start off in rags, just like in every RPG ever, not long before after getting your tribe's armor, cloak, and choice of weapons. You can dual wield weapons like a crazed marauder, or pick one weapon and one shield, or like I mentioned earlier, have two shields and bludgeon people to death. What I found interesting too, is that if you equip your shield in your main hand, and your axe, sword, flail, mace, whatever weapon in the other hand, your main hand's equipment will act as a weapon. So you'll use the shield to attack, and the other weapon to defend and deflect, which I thought was pretty cool. Just like in previous titles though, Ivor somehow gets involved with the Creed of Assassins, and you'll get access to a wrist blade, which he keeps on the top of his forearm rather than hidden away. The blade should ride on the underside of your arm, to conceal it from your target. I have no wish to hide this. And I would rather not make the same mistake you two have. Just like in previous titles, you'd be able to assassinate and take out enemies in a variety of ways. There's even a setting in the gameplay menus where an assassination can be an instant kill, rather than just whittling away health on larger targets. Speaking of settings, Valhalla lets you customise nearly every experience. You'd be able to scale the game's difficulty in combat, stealth, and even exploration. These dedicated settings remind me a little bit of the immersion settings that we got with Ghost Recon Breakpoint in their updates. Now if you haven't played Assassin's Creed since Syndicate or Black Flag, and hey that's fine, Syndicate left a bit of a sour taste in my mouth, but that's me, the series is now completely different. You'll play it as a designated character, but you'll be able to change weapons and armour and learn new skills and more. Basically it's a little bit like The Witcher now. Now there's also a levelling system, and there are some areas in the game that recommends being a certain level before you enter that area. For example, one area is a recommended level of 280, and you start at level 1. So if you're a fan of The Witcher, World of Warcraft, or, well, the previously recent Assassin's Creed games, then you should enjoy this playstyle. Obviously, too, with these games, each time you level up, you don't get one, but two skill points to put into a skill tree, which looks a lot like the skill trees from Skyrim. There are endless skills and buffs to unlock, but you'll also find hidden abilities around the world, which gives you special attacks like being able to fire four arrows at once, or turning Ivor into Scorpion for Mortal Kombat. Also, just like in previous games, you'll be able to utilize a flying contraption to scope out the area, more commonly known as a bird. Of course, though, playing as a Viking, instead of using an eagle, you use a raven. The raven can be used for scouting out the area, but also for highlighting nearby resources and loot. You'll also have Odin Sight, which is the sonar ping system just like we've used previously in other Assassin's Creed games. You'll even be able to actively toggle Ivor's hood and cloak. Ivor will basically become Batman, covering himself or herself with their cloak and hiding all of their weapons. By doing this, you can blend into the crowd or avoid detection in areas that you shouldn't be in. You'll also be able to call your longboat, summon your horse, equip a torch, or just blow the horn for shits and gigs, which I did constantly while raiding. Even the small little details in Valhalla had me go, okay, that's a nice touch. When going through ruins or crypts or anywhere where there's a fuckload of spiderwebs, using your torch will burn them away. When you're sailing anywhere in Valhalla in your longboat, you'll see your raven circling above. There's even a load of little extra things to do in Valhalla, like rap battling. Yes, it's called something else, but it's a fucking rap battle. Then I will make a fine goblet from out of your skull. You can even hunt exotic animals, do side missions, go drinking, go raiding, hunt exotic armor and treasure, and there's even, of course, legendary gear to find and unlock. Now graphically for a Xbox One X game, Valhalla is damn beautiful, and in some instances it had me do a double check to make sure I wasn't playing it on a Series X, not a One X even though I don't own a Series X as of the time of this recording, because it still looks pretty good. Now, I haven't had any major frame rate issues to note of, but I have had a couple of funny graphical gags here and there. I've seen Ivor's beard flip into his face looking like he's eating it, and at one point a random Viking longboat full of men ported in from the sky, which had me laugh. But as for gameplay bugs or mission bugs, I experienced none. 
Now this is a small negative, but Ivor does start the game as a Viking and doesn't have his wrist blade or anything, but he already knows how to parkour around everything and how to jump into hay bales. It would have been cool if you learned how to do these movements later on in the game and the first hour or two just teach you basic stealth and combat like a Viking and then later you learn how to parkour and assassinate people. Also characters body language and stance is exactly the same as well every other Assassin's Creed game. They'll have their legs bent, their backs hunched and ready. Now you'd think a Spartan and a Viking's combat stance would be a little different, no? Also, yes, they're Vikings, but some characters' hair seems very Skrillex. Of course, being an Assassin's Creed game, there are moments outside of the designated time setting, and any time you're running around in the modern era, I just wanted to skip every cutscene and quickly return to being a Viking as quickly as possible. Now, I also tried playing Origins and Odyssey and found them quite boring and dropped them quicker than Kanye's hopes for being president. But there's some story going on with magnetic fields and magnets. Magnets. Always with the magnets. And of course, the world is in danger, which I didn't really care for. I'm not making myself clear. I don't give a fuck. I did also find it a bit weird that Ivor is known as Wolfkist, because he or she got attacked on the neck by a wolf as a child and survived, but Ivor is a part of the Raven tribe and uses ravens to see around where it would have been cool if rather than using a raven to see around, you could use a wolf. Or that he or she had a wolf companion that you could give orders to, like guard, follow, attack, sit, gentle, and play dead. Also, for whatever stupid reason, you can't kill civilians when you're raiding. You can only take out the guards defending the settlement or the city, but if you try to kill some random monks, you'll get a warning with desynchronization. Are you kidding me? Doing a Viking raid and not killing everything and everyone is like going to a pub and not getting a pint when you order a palmy. I also noticed during cutscenes if you're using one-handed weapons like axes or swords, they're mysteriously missing in cutscenes from your holsters, yet shields and bows remain on your back. Small thing I know, but I noticed it. Now while there are shops in Valhalla to sell trinkets and random crap, you won't be going into towns and to weaponsmiths to sell unwanted gear and buy new ones like in Odyssey and Origins. Yes, there are new weapons and armors to collect, but you'll find them out in the wild by raiding villages or castles or by looting them from gear chests. What also I think hurts the Assassin's Creed franchise is the time period the game is set in and the mythos. If you're not a fan of mummies, pyramids and Brendan Fraser, then you won't like Origins. If you're not a fan of Zeus, Kevin Sorbo and Frank Miller comics, then Odyssey might not be for you. Finally, if you are a fan of Norse mythology from the MCU, then Valhalla will not scratch that itch. Now this isn't a negative by any means, but just a heads up. But things aren't clean cut as they are in the Marvel with Thor and Odin. Valhalla definitely has more of a realistic vibe to it and its art style is more like the show Vikings and a bit of God of War. For what will most likely be the last Assassin's Creed game on current gen consoles, but for many people will be their first game on the next gen consoles, Assassin's Creed Valhalla is pretty damn good. Having previously disliked both Origins and Odyssey, I was worried that I wouldn't like Valhalla. The combat, customization, the story, and honestly, my preference for Norse mythology over Egyptian and Greek kept my interest in Valhalla. Every raid was exciting, every execution was gory, and there was always something to do. Now, if you'll excuse me, I gotta go get shit-faced with my tribe.